the EC. Uh, so even if your experiment is not swapped in yet, you can already log into the EC, but I think most of them are swapped in. And then you can uh, use the DNS name. We go to the details, so the DNS name, uh, access point dot. We copy this for easy. You say yes. And um, because uh, you are the same uh, user, your uh, uh, keys are automatically distributed to all the nodes, so you don't have to put in your password uh, every time you want to go to a node. So now I am actually, I am on that node. So uh, this is the IP address then, so this is actually node 10. <laughs> so you see that, is everybody able to log into their own node? One of their nodes. So this is basically where, where the MLAB framework stops. Uh, on the, the regular uh, page. Yeah. So if you click the experiment, uh, or just click the name, you can do whatever you want. So hypergroup 6, I think, yeah. Okay. There you have the details. Right yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you can copy everything here. Uh, it's not really needed. Well, you have to SSH to the to the experiment controller first. So, so to this is it. Oh yeah. So ten eleven thirty one six because for some reason the DNS uh, doesn't work here. So everybody on this side managed to log into their uh, node. Um, on that node you have root access. So the the sudo password is just the same as your your own password. Basic uh, Linux. Um, and you can basically mess up that node. So if you delete everything on there, it doesn't really matter. Um, if we want to swap it out, we, we kill the power. Well, of course, we first try to shut it down normally. But if for some reason you destroy that node, don't worry. We kill the power, we PXC boot it again. And after every experiment, the default image is loaded again onto all the nodes. So it doesn't matter what you did on the node. person uh, after you uh, will have a clean node. Except if you if you fright the node or something. But. So um, everybody managed. Okay, almost. That's good. Training it with what to what? I don't know. Crew, crew user. So SSH crew at. It's the crew user. Yeah. <laughs> Training at why not? So now you're on the experiment controller, center server, and now you can use the DNS. Yeah. Just copy the DNS Just SSH. Uh, yeah. okay. So now, yeah, I think everybody is logged into their own node. So why did I stress the DNS names that much? It's because these DNS names are used inside your OMF script. So if you want to address a resource, one node, in your experiment, it's this DNS name that is used. Uh, beware. For some reason, OMF is not, not capable of handling capitals. So every uh, uh, DNS name containing capitals, you will have to remove the capitals in your uh, experiment description. Now, I think this is already a big part uh, of, of the tutorial. I have also uh, some screenshots step by step. Um, uh, if we upload the presentation uh, later, if you get into trouble, so the operating system create new experiment. We did this experiment list. You can see the activity log file. And of course, you have to reserve before you can use it. 
if everything goes well, you get a swap success. If not, uh, you check the error message, and it's probably a syntax error. Uh, if it's not a syntax error, you contact us, of course. Details to see the DNS mapping, okay? Click on a node you want to check to see the details. Yeah, of course, I forgot to mention this, but so if you click on a node, you see the operating system it is booted in, and you can also uh, reboot that node, and maybe more importantly, if you installed a lot of software, and you don't want to do it again next time uh, you swap in your experiment, you can click here and say create a disk image. Uh, the advantage of starting from our baseline image and then adding software, then creating a new disk image, is that all the features from Amilab OMF are already included in the image. If you start clean from a, a regular Ubuntu, you will have to install all these things by yourself, which, which I do not recommend. So the, the best thing, of course, um, well, we even have an uh, open WRT image. Uh, we have Debian. We, ha we even have a Windows 7, uh, which nobody uses, <laughs> but anyway, we have it. <laughs> uh, so Ubuntu, uh, uh, since recently, also Scent OS, uh, Fedora-based, I think, if for some reason you would uh, use Scent OS. Anyway. OK, so you can also, yeah, experimentation, list image IDs. You see the images that are available inside your project. So if one of your other project members uh, created a disk image, you can reuse uh, that image. Now for OMF, so I'm using some slides from, from Nikta. Um, so the problem they had is that a lot of testbeds use their own management framework. So every time you go to a testbed, you have to learn again how to work with the testbed. Now the OMF approach is to have everything centralized into one experiment description. So one script where you define upfront the resources you use, so the DNS names we, we just uh, created, and also what applications are on those resources and what the timeline is. So I start this application, I then start that application. So this is to make life easier for the experimenters. Of course, it, it has some, some first, it, it requires some first effort to get used to the, the, the control framework. If you do not need these, this orchestration of experimentation, uh, if you just say, okay, I can log into the nodes, I, I will write my own scripts, you are free to do so. Of course, uh, we encourage to use this, because it's then very easy to port your experiment to other testbeds that also run OMF. You can just copy it, the, uh, change the resource names, and you're basically good to go. Um, one other uh, advantage is also uh, for example, if you write a paper, uh, you can then easily include your experiment description because OMF is being used now in a lot of uh, wireless and wired testbeds uh, all across Europe and, and even all across the world. So um, it is becoming more or less a standard of doing uh, experiment control. So you have a few of the, the sites which where OMF is deployed. No details. So yeah, I mind. So how does it work? So I said an experimenter has an experiment script where he defines everything and he logs into the experiment controller. This is the machine where you're logged into to, to uh, avoid the DNS issue. So you're already logged into it. If you log out of your node, you are logged into the experiment controller. It's the third paragraph on the sheet. And then basically the aggregate manager is what the MLAP boss server does now. So also uh, DHCP and stuff. So we, we uh, threw that one out in OMF6. Uh, it's not used any, anymore, anyway. So. so then most important on every resource, so this is one, for example, Zotac node, and there we run a daemon, it's in Ruby, and it's basically a daemon that listens to the experiment controller to get input from the user. So when you start an OMF experiment on the experiment controller, it will parse every command in there and then forward that command through uh, through an XMPP protocol, so a pub sub mechanism, it will forward it to the resource controllers on every node. So that's basically it for, for the OMF part. Then for OML, for collecting measurements, on every node we have installed a client library, uh, which allows you to connect to a OML server, uh, yeah, the OML server here. Uh, basically, also the same philosophy behind it, so you define your measurements in a uniform way so that 
they make sense to, to other people, then you can easily uh, rerun or redo the measurements, compare them with other uh, data sets. It's basically only the, the format uh, of the data that is defined. So, so actually, what you measure with it, it doesn't measure anything by itself, OML. It just gives you a library which you can call either from, from your own application in C or either through a, a wrapper script, but that's, that's too much detail. Uh, so it basically just measures what you tell it to measure. It doesn't measure anything by itself. And you're also not obliged to, to use it. It's not because you use, use OMF that you have to use OMF. The setup, so um, BOSS and OPS file server from Emulab. So this is what we talked about uh, before. And then we have the aggregate manager. Don't, don't think about it. It's, it's just a dummy. It doesn't do anything. But OMF needs to have it in order to, to work. And then an OML server on the same machine. It's also specified on your uh, sheets. Then the XMPP server, so PubSock mechanism, just to do the communication between the experiment controller here and the resource controllers that run on the different nodes. I don't know if this is more or less clear how, how it is. I see some people nodding, so. Anyway. So tutorial step by step. So we're going to try to run iperf if we still have a bit of time. Um, so we have an access point and a client. Yeah, it's called server now. So we, we swapped in three nodes, one access point, one client, one backup. And we will try to set up an iperf. Now the manual approach is, of course, SSH to the access point, set up the wireless interface. If you're not familiar with the operating system, it, this can already take some time. Uh, start the server side application, SSH to the client, set up the wireless interface again, start uh, the client, and then collect the measurements manually. Let's go back. So this, this is basically how you would, of course, you, you, put, you only have to do this once if you use your own scripts. Uh, still, if you use OMF, it's a little easier. <coughs> basically, uh, so you SSH to the experiment controller and you write an application definition. This application definition is just to make sure that all applications that are being used in experiments are described in a uniform way. So you just say, okay, where's the binary of iperf? Where can I find it? You have to tell it to OMF. What are the input command line arguments, uh, which you can give to it? And then what is the output? So what, what, what do you want to measure? If you say, I just want to start the client, um, then you don't have to measure any. Then you write an experiment description where you say, okay, I want to configure these wireless interfaces, but I will show an, an example. This is basically the, the technology that is underneath. It's basically abstracted from, from the user. So you don't have to know the IW config uh, commands to, to configure that wireless interface. OMF takes care of that. So you say which nodes I want to run, and then you specify a timeline. And then you execute the experiment, and you read the measurements uh, if you did any. So the application, user bin iperf, for example, then an application definition around it, right? So where can I find it? Input parameters, output parameters, and then an experiment description. What, which nodes, what application, or what node, and what time? Using a wrapper, so just quickly, so here in this, OMF provides, or OML provides an iperf application which has, uh, which communicates with the OML client library natively. So that is a binary where it is included. Say you have uh, your own application and you cannot modify the source code or you have code that you cannot modify in any way, then you can use a wrapper. Basically what the wrapper does is it processes the standard output of that, uh, of that uh, program. Okay, and then the same way, an application definition around it and an experiment definition. This is, um, uh, but I will show this um, in a shell. I think it is uh, faster there. Okay. okay, so before you can run it, I have already, um, so on the experiment controller, you can maybe uh, bear with me. In your uh, home directory, you have directory iperf. 
So you, ju you just click CD. I birth. And if you then check which files are in there, you see there is already an iperf uh, experiment description for group 14. This is mine. If you open it with Pico or Nano or whatever you are familiar with, or VI. <laughs> So did everybody succeed to open that file? Maybe it's best, okay, before you open that file, maybe you copy it and you give it, you give the file the name of your own group. Otherwise we're all working on the same file and you'll have to modify some stuff. So just copy it. Uh, CP uh, my group 14 file to group 1 till 9. Yeah, Pico Nano should work. Uh, well, it doesn't have a doesn't have a visual front end, so. Oh yeah, actually it's a Yeah. So did everybody succeed to to create a file with his own group number? Pico is not working. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, but you're on the up. You have to be on the EC. Well, you don't have to. Yeah, you have to be to run OMF experiments. You have to be on the OMF experiments. Uh, yeah. Well, you through at access point, you're still logged into your node. So if you type exit, exit, yeah, EC. That's the one you need. And there, uh, people will work. Ah, uh, okay. So there's an hyperv directory. So I think everybody succeeded, yeah. Yeah. or others are being helped, okay. So you can see I have defined in my experiment description two groups, so dev group, dev group, uh, and then one group I called access point, so here I called one group access point, I called one group client. Can you read this? Yeah, big enough. And then next to that, it's the DNS name of uh, the experiment we just activated. So on the MLAP homepage, you can see the DNS name of your node. So for example, in my case, access point dot experiment name, project name, and then the YLAP2. So again, if you change, maybe it's good that you change the file uh, while we are going through it. You have to change this now. If you also called it access point, you just have to change the, the experiment name to, to what your experiment uh, looks like. So just probably just change the group number. Yeah. Please copy it to your uh, to your own. Copy the group 14 files. Is that mine? To avoid that you start working on the, on the wrong file. So just copy yeah. the, yeah, so the 14. The 14 yeah, yeah. So everybody's in that file now. So change your resource names. And then add an application. So this application, I will go into detail on the application definition, but it's in a, a separate file. So this is just addressing an application, iperf, and setting some properties. So command line arguments. Say I want to run it uh, UDP, using UDP. It has to be a server uh, on that node. It has to use that port. Uh, report style, it's a uh, UML. Um, to, to allow OML 
to capture some data. And then interval, of course, report uh, every every second uh, the output of the of the iperf. Then here, so you have the properties, command line arguments, and then you say, okay, what do I want to measure? I want to measure the transfer and the losses. How frequently do I want to do it? I want to run it every time iperf generates a sample. I want to forward it um, to my OML server. You can say that instead of samples, you could say interval 100. Then OML will buffer all data from iper for 100 seconds, and it will then forward the batch to the to the OML server. Say you have really a lot of data, then this can be useful. Then, for an important part where you where you will have to do some modifications, so you specify on the node the network part wireless zero. We also we could also use wireless one, but let's just use wireless zero. And then you have some properties which you can specify. Mode ad hoc. You could say they're master or managed. Uh, master, managed, and ad hoc. I think are the three. Uh, supported modes. Then you have the type. Here I have now A, because I'm working in the A band, so group 14, so on the sheets you got. I'm working in the A band, I think all the rest of you will be working in the G band. So go ahead, change that to G. Change the channel to, to the channel listed on your, your sheet. So it's the same as your group number. Transmit power. It's specified to zero now, maybe leave it there. Uh, you don't get, get enough, what's that? It's in DBM. It's in DBM, yeah. yeah. So you can go from yeah. zero to 20. Yeah. Okay. But if everybody uses 20, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. The, results <laughs> <won't be laughs> the results won't be so good. Um, and then the ESS ID, important, change this to, I don't really care what, just not the same as somebody else. And in your client, it has to be the same, right? IP address, I would not change, uh, doesn't really matter. There are separated networks anyway, so you can use the same IP address. Should be good. So for the client, same thing, just you have an extra property, uh, two extra properties, you say, okay, it's a client and it has to connect to that server, and time, it has to run for 60 seconds and then shut down. Uh, here, you be sure that you uh, enter the right values, uh, or the same values at least as you specified in your access points, or it will not work. Now, the add application we did here, here these properties, um, OMF has to know how you can set uh, these properties. Therefore, we have an extra file which is called iperf.rb. You don't have to open it. I will just quickly show it because it's, it's really detailed. So in this, in this application definition, you say where you can find at the binary. You give it a version, short description, doesn't matter. And then you have a list of all the properties that that application can handle. So say, for example, you have your own um, um, application, which you cannot modify. You will probably have to write, uh, well, you will have to write an application definition uh, for yourself. So then you just, you will probably just have a few uh, input parameters uh, there. So you have the type, uh, description, and yeah. So we have a whole list of properties. I did not write this myself, so, so OML provides some, some applications, uh, a traffic generator, traffic receiver, uh, hyperf, a lot of stuff. And then you have different uh, measurements. So for example, if we go now to, like for example, losses. So you define a measurement of losses, and you say, OK, it has a process ID, connection ID, begin, interval, end, and then the total data grams lost. So this is how you, how you uh, set it up, how you define your application, and there, and then, if we go back to the experiment description where you are, you are still in, probably. So there you see, you have to add an application 
with the same name, of course, as you wrote your application definition. And then you can say, for example, for the losses, you can just say, measure my losses every second. That's a bit how it works, to define resources and specify which applications run on there. And then you have the timeline. Very uh, simple timeline now. We have, so on the event, all up and installed. So OMF will wait for the nodes to boot, to start their resource controller and to say, OK, if they had to install some applications first, they will wait until they are installed. If everything is OK, the node is good to go. It will say, OK, I'm good to go. That way, you can be sure that um, your experiment starts more or less at the, at the same time on all nodes. It's uh, because of delays on the XMPP server, it's not really uh, uh, time critical <laughs> to one millisecond or something, but still, it's around the same time that your uh, nodes will start. And then you say, OK, I print some info starting an iperv experiment. I will wait 10 seconds for the interfaces uh, to come up. You could uh, describe, well, not for the interfaces to come up, because that will be uh, waited for by the all up and install command. But it's possible that you will not yet be associated to the good ad hoc network. So that's why I added an extra 10 seconds just to give, give them time to um, associate with the correct network. And then you say, OK, my group, uh, group access point, start applications. So I will then just start all my applications. You could say I want to only start one application. Anyway. Info, starting server, wait five seconds. Say group client, start my applications to avoid that the client starts earlier than the server and, and the, the, the program uh, crashes. Then wait for 60 seconds because my application is running for 60 seconds. And then stop my applications and just trigger the event, experiment done. That's basically that's it for your first um, simple uh, experiment. <laughs> if I now, um, I'm feeling lucky, lucky, so I will go ahead and run it. So maybe before you all go ahead and execute it, um, it will probably there will be some delay because there are a lot of people. Uh, starting the experiment at the same time, but it's interesting um, that we know, uh, that we can stress test it. But so the command to execute it is umf exec, and then you have to specify an extra um, uh, command line argument, which is minus minus uml. You are right, I will project the slides uh, with the different steps. Then you say tcp. Uh, colon am.ylab2.imis.be colon 3004. This is on your sheet, so that's the OML server. So that's the, the fourth paragraph uh, on your sheet. So basically, TCP protocol, uh, the DNS name, and then the port on which the OML server is listening. And then um, uh, the group. <coughs> Okay, thank you. Yes, sure. Oh, yeah, you see, I'm on the access point node, so I can uh, not, yeah. um, let me put it a little bit bigger first. Okay, good now? So I exited, so that's one disadvantage of your home directory being mounted onto all your nodes that you don't know where you are. Um, okay. Uh, I perf ET group 14. So let's go ahead and run it. So it will give you some, some output of what is going wrong. Chances are, are big that first time you write an, an experiment description, or even the, the 50th yeah. time that you still do some, some typos. So I am now waiting for nodes to come up. So it lists two nodes, zero up, two down, total two. So if we are lucky, if I made a typo here in the DNS names, <coughs> then my experiment will not start. 
because it will wait for resources that are just not there. Which might <laughs> even be the case here because it's, it's taking a bit. You ran the experiment already? Okay. <laughs> Good. Good. You're luckier than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time we see that, especially at the start of, of the UMF experiment, a lot of messages are, are being exchanged between the experiment controller and the, the resource controller. And the XMPP pro well, implementation, I shouldn't say the protocol, the implementation we use is not really that efficient. So, yeah, we are checking uh, alternatives and uh, maybe even right or wrong. Did anybody already run it? How do you run it exactly? I will uh, show you the slide. So make sure you are on the experiment controller and not on one of your nodes. Then just go ahead and type. I can see that already finished here. So then for the people where, where it has uh, ran successfully, um, you can uh, go to the web page of the UML server. So the fourth paragraph on your sheet, so am.ylab2, ylabt, i-be, slash php, pg, admin. All right, it's also on the slide. You can log in with ylab user, ylab user. It's on the, on the handout sheets. I must say that, so the, the OMF uh, version we are running now, is 5.4, uh, uses uh, the aggregate manager as an intermediate step, which is an extra source of delay. Lots of people starting at the same time cause very high delays for low amounts of nodes. Now we also have an OMF6 installation available, so it's also installed on the same node. Syntax is just a little bit different, but so, with OMF6, we are now doing experiments, and we see that it's much more efficient in startup of experiment. Uh, it handles the XMPP messages uh, much more efficient. Uh, it's also Ruby, possibly a Ruby uh, problem, older version, newer version. So there is a, a solution on the way, although I think that for some people, it already uh, ran. So if you then go to the PHP PG, you can yeah. click PostgreSQL, mm -hmm. YLAP user. Even for the ones who didn't succeed their experiment yet, you can, you can do this. So just browse to that page, give your username. Well, not your username. That's a, a general OML server. So just YLAP user, YLAP user. Click login. And then you should see a list of all the experiments that have collected data before. So if I, for example, take one. Um, there you see the list for each user, because now you're using a generic... Uh, yeah. So the thing is, with it's basically an OMF and OML problem. They don't really have any authentication or authorization. They are working now in the context of the project Fed for Fire. They are working on resolving that issue. Yeah. But for now, this version has no authentication. So if I use the DNS names of your experiment in my experiment description, I can just uh, tell your nodes what to do. It will not, not check if I am the correct user. Well, and if you're the, the same user account, yeah, definitely will not check. 
Uh, anyway, it will not check. For OML, it's the same thing. So the OML server we provide, it's a central server. It has only one user. Everybody can access and delete data from somebody else. Nothing prevents you, of course, from running that experiment, downloading your data, and then remove it. Uh, nothing even prevents you from setting up your own OML server. It's an app get install. Uh, so you can even direct that data to a machine at your offices, at your home. You can dump your data there if you want to be sure that uh, nobody can see it. If they uh, um, hack into the data, it's not encrypted or anything. So be aware of that uh, if you have sensitive data. If that should be the case, you can always contact us and we can check for a, for a quick solution. So, maybe let's enlarge this. This like issue is being addressed in other uh, fire yeah. projects, not in Chrome. Yeah. Uh, as soon as it is available, we will implement it. But so if I take one of my databases, for example, from yesterday, I can see, okay, I have a database with uh, two tables, well, four tables, the senders, I can browse that. Uh, I just have my access point who is sending data, because with iperf it's only the server that really has useful data. Um, and then you can browse uh, the losses, you can browse the transfer, and you can start playing with uh, OMF. The name of your experiment? I probably, uh, so if you go to the website, the e-labs, the, e uh, the white house, yeah. there you can see uh, I belong to the Wow. Did you find it there? Oh, ah, but, oh, yeah, okay, okay, important part. Yeah, you are right. I forgot to mention it. So, if you start uh, your experiment, and if it, if it succeeds uh, to start, you will, well, not only if it succeeds, you will get, well, let me search for it here. It has a context of slices, if some of you are familiar with SFA, but anyway, it's too more into detail. It has a unique name for every experiment. So 